Okay, it's Bill here from Optic Central. Today we're going to uh, we're going to be looking at a uh, Forge 10 by 42. It's uh, the, the, the top of their new um, three or four um, level range. They've started off with Prime. There's an Engage and a Forge. There's a number of others as well um, to fill in a couple of gaps. Um, now, looking at the Forge, the Engage, and the Prime, the Prime is the entry level one. Um, uh, but the Forge and the Engage have kind of similar specs. Um, they both have uh, ED glass, uh, whereas the Prime doesn't. Uh, the Forge and the Engage uh, also have um, uh, phase correction on their prisms, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as some ultra-wide band coating on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the glass. They also have uh, uh, something called uh, Exo Barrier, uh, which is a super tough coating on their outside lenses, which in a, it, it enables you to uh, clean them easily, uh, and also uh, it stops them from getting a little bit dirty because it sort of mults, m makes the, the, the water and the gunk beat up and fall off. Um, they also have fully multi-coated lenses, um, so that gives you extra brightness uh, for, for transmission. Now the Forge 10 by 42, this guy, um, is particularly good for birding, uh, sport watching, terrain viewing if you're on a hike or something like that, uh, general stuff. Um, it's also good for astronomy um, because of the, uh, the, the, multi uh, the fully multi-cutted lenses. Um, and also the phase correction is going to help there. In researching this video, I got into, uh, got into prisms uh, a little bit and uh, I found a couple of interesting things. Um, the Forge has uh, the 15 by 56, that's the big brother of this thing, has something called an Upper Koenig prism, which is, um, which is brighter it's got fewer bounces, uh, but it's heavier, more expensive, and harder to make. Now, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a little graphic up on the screen somewhere here. The 10x42s don't have the Upper Koenig prisms. They have something called a Schmidt-Paham prism. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I'm sorry about that. Um, the Schmidt-Paham is duller because it has more bounces, uh, but it's smaller, cheaper, and lighter. Now, I'm simplifying a little bit, and I'm not talking about uh, the, the, the roof part of the prism and uh, the phase correction and stuff like that that roof prisms require. But yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the guts of it. So the, the, the 15 by 56 has the upper kerning prism. The smaller, uh, uh, the smaller binoculars in the forge range don't. They have the Schmidt-Pahan prism. The other features that um, the Forge has uh, is it's nitrogen purged, which is, uh, makes it fog proof. Uh, it's also waterproof um, from, now it's one meter for 30 minutes, uh, it's, uh, it, it's able to withstand. Um, and like I said before, it's got the exo barrier, which makes it, uh, uh, makes it easy to clean as well as not likely to get quite as dirty. Um, and it has fully multi-coated multi -coated lenses, which gives you a, a, a brighter image. The other thing about the, uh, about the Forge is it has a, uh, what they call the ironclad warranty, which is, uh, which is a lifetime warranty. Now, we're in Australia. Uh, in Australia, 30 years is, uh, is a lifetime. I believe the 30-year period, uh, uh, it, it applies to the Forge. Okay, so let's see what's inside the box. Whoop. It's got a little magnetic catch on the box. Okay, we've got a quick... Um, a, a getting to know you card from uh, uh, for the uh, thing, and let's see, we have a case Put over there. The case is quite useful. Uh, speaking as a bird watcher, this will stay in my car glove box forever. Um, oh, one thing I do like about the case is it's got these little Velcro pat no, Velcro catches, so you can actually open it up fully. Oh, bang. Now we've got a. Uh, this is a harness. You can. Uh, there's, they also provide a strap. Uh, the, the harness and the strap are to be used. You know, obviously not not both at the same, at the same time. You can use the the strap as, uh, to to hold the the binoculars from your from your, your neck as normal. Uh, you can also have the, uh, the the harness which goes around your back, and you can have it dangling from the harness, which is a lot easier to carry if you're uh, if you're walking long distances. Uh, there's a small. A small strap for the um, uh, for, for the case, and obviously a uh, a cleaning cloth for the the glass. Now, the 
Er, come here. Binoculars themselves. It's a nice little bag, that. The binoculars themselves. More plastic. Um, let's see. We've got the shower caps. These shower caps you, you, you attach to the strap. You leave those on the strap at all times because when it rains, you, and well, the bird watcher in me likes to I'll wear, wear my binoculars down there. Um, you just put that on there and the, the rain comes down and, it's, and it stops. You don't need to cover, cover the bottom straps, uh, the, the bottom um, cups. I would probably take these off. Um, let's see. It weighs 860 grams. That's sort of medium for a, for a pair of binoculars this size. Um, there are, uh, there are uh, some binoculars which are heavier. Um, the front to back, you can almost feel that it's a little bit light in the front. Um, they have put a second bridge here, which, will, which um, uh, not only makes it a little bit more um, uh, robust, it also gives it a little bit more weight to the front, which will compensate for the fact that they have a, uh, a schmidt Bahan. Um, which is up the back there, rather than the uh, the Upper Koenig prism, which is a little bit further down. The colour I can get used to. It's uh, it's it's a kind of a they they call it terrain. I, I prefer a black one, but you know, it's hardly hardly um, hardly important. Um, one thing I have found with is, is the focus wheel um, on the Bushnell Forge is a little bit squishy. Uh, it, it feels it feels as though it's I almost fighting you. It's, uh, it, it takes a little bit to get going and then it sort of gets a little bit to sl uh, slow down. It's just, I don't know. A lot of the Bushnell binoculars are like that. It's um, something, you're, again, you get used to. It's fine. Um, it's got a locking diopter, which uh, you pull up to, uh, to adjust. And you, you adjust that and you pop it back down when, you, when you're finished. Um, that's the same as in, uh, in the Engage. Uh, the Prime doesn't have that. I haven't used these in the field myself, uh, not yet. Uh, I would expect the, uh, that the ED glass, uh, as well as the phase coatings and the, um, uh, the uh, fully multi-coated coatings uh, on the lenses would, would combine to give us a, a good bright image. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to, uh, to, to taking these, these things out of the, into the field. That's about it. Um, quite a usable pair of binoculars, I think. So um, we'll uh, see you next time.